Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema studio, Madeline Sackler. Um, to me, your docs are about people who are striving beyond the status quo. Um, people who are trying to do something um, a little bit better or in a little bit more um, risky situation or trying to defeat the odds in some way. Um, how this story, I'm going to say the full title, okay? <laughs> I had to write down, Dangerous Acts Starring the Unstable Elements of Belarus. It looks awesome on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about, and titles are pretty important. Obviously in the program it just says Unstable Elements, but why was this important to you to represent the film in this way? I think it was, well, I mean, so the film is obviously, it's about an underground theater group in Belarus who was fleeing from the dictator after the rigged election in 2010. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's a part of the world that people really don't know much about. And so because we had this sort of behind the scenes story of this kind of underground artistic revolution, we thought it was important to try to incorporate that in the title in some way. And how much did you know about them beforehand or they reached out to you or no I actually so I heard about I'm based in New York and they come through there a lot actually to perform they're not allowed to sell tickets in Belarus or they can be arrested for an economic crime because they're unregistered and obviously you know that's why they're underground because they can't get registered so the only way that they can really survive is by performing internationally and so they had gotten quite a bit of, of press already and won some awards um, in the States and in the UK and so I had heard about them that way and reached out to them. In terms of taking a risk in order to be yourself or perform, so the people of the free theatre, like what would you, what would you do, like what would you consider to be a healthy risk in terms of your own creative expression? Would you do what they do in order to get this this expression out? Yeah, I mean, it's something I've thought about a lot because meeting people like this who are risking everything just to do what they love, which in this case is performing theater, for me it would be making films. And just knowing, you know, while I was making this film, I, I knew that I wouldn't be allowed to make a film like this if I were in Belarus, or really most of the films that I've made I wouldn't be allowed to make if I lived there. And to be honest, like I don't, I don't know if I would be brave enough to do, to do it. And so that's like kind of an interesting dichotomy. But then when you start, I think when you start thinking about it, you know, what makes a dangerous act a dangerous act in Belarus? You know, there there are those all over the world. It's just a different scale. And so, um, you know, hopefully it reminds people that there are people taking these risks. Yeah. So we can forget. Does it, does, it, um, does it inspire you on a daily basis? And, and secondly, what would you do? What, what would be your second career choice if this was this kind of heavily oppressed system here? <laughs> what would I do if I weren't making films? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it does inspire me, absolutely. I mean, it also, it has sort of like a dual um, effect on me. It also makes me feel really lucky. You know, I think, like my first film was kind of about how things could be improved in the States, you know, for low income kids. And so I'm so often, I think all of us are sort of picking apart our own democracies for good reason to try to improve them. Yeah. Um, but working on this film reminds me of the things to sort of be thankful for. And that was, that's like a nice feeling. What I would be doing otherwise, I mean, I didn't go to school for film, so probably I would have kept doing like science related <laughs> activities <laughs> which some people maybe might argue I should have you could even have in had, America <laughs> you could have had the same title to your career unstable elements yeah, yeah. pursue that, that exactly. course of action yeah. um, is there something that that we don't consider as currently like I'm kind of curious about the not impossible or versus the, the possible you know and for these people by all accounts, what they're doing should be impossible where they live. Um, is is there is there something in there for you? Is there something that that you think should be impossible that you want to make possible? In here or in your in your world? In my world, that is impossible that I would want to be possible. I mean, I think 
one thing that I sort of, so one of the reasons I wanted to make the film was because I didn't, to be honest, like I didn't really know about the situation in Belarus at all. And I think it's such a heavy lift in the West. Like there are so many issues that are, have just become the zeitgeist in many reason, in many cases for very good reason. But this is sort of a scenario where it's a highly censored, like authoritarian regime. And, you know, a lot of people told me when I started making the film that nobody would care. Um, which, you know, remains to be seen, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, I hope they do, and, and maybe that's, you know, one of the things that, that could become possible. Um, in fact, they're, you know, like, the, I think the, the president, is that what they call him, the guy who runs yeah. the dictator, mm -hmm. um, who runs Belarus, came out um, against Putin in the last yeah. couple of days. So do you now find yourself a spokesperson on all things Belarus? And were you prepared for that with each of your films, like on the lottery to become a spokesperson for education, or you know, on the Duke films to become, you know, a sports filmmaker <laughs> fanatic and to then, learn about basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, you know, for you, like, do you kind of go into each of these projects knowing that you're gonna have to spend a bit of time at the other end of them being an advocate for these? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, the story definitely comes first, and I make the films to try to make a piece of art, so nothing sort of supersedes that. When it, I mean, when it comes down to it, I do this because I love, like, the craft of making a film, and there is a little bit always of, of tension in a way where, like, I would love to talk about more about the art sometimes behind making the films and the choices that I've made than the issue, but I wouldn't choose these topics if I wasn't passionate about them. Yeah. So. How do you decide how much to tell the story versus how much to safeguard the subjects? In terms of their personal safety? Yeah. Well, it, it's sort of this, like, it's actually kind of an interesting irony in these repressive regimes because in some ways the more attention a person or a group of people gets, the safer they are because more and more political capital has to be expended to you know, stop them from doing what they're doing. So my hope actually is that sort of shedding a light, shining a light on this group will, will help them and that's been the case for them in the past. Have they been able to see any of the footage as it's come together? From you? Yeah, they've started seeing it. Um, we haven't done like a big screening for the the theater yet, but we're you know we're hoping that we can show it underground in Belarus and. And they were able to smuggle footage out, for, you know, as part of the archival footage that you use in the in the film as well. We did that. Yeah. So I worked with an underground cinematographer who had state accreditation to own a camera, with the hope of sort of mitigating some of that risk that you're talking about. So if she got pulled over, you know, she could show that she's allowed to have a camera. And she worked with us to drive the hard drives over to Lithuania or Russia or someplace where she could ship them with, you know, less risk. But there's like many duplicate copies of this footage like scattered around Belarus, you know, just in case something got confiscated. Yeah. So it seems like so illogical in these times that we're treating this, you know, product as something that's illegal. Yeah. Um, in terms of the name of your film company, is it called Osmosis? No, it's called Great, Great Curve. Curve Films. Yeah, I have two production companies. So why Great Curve? Uh, it's actually a talking head song. <laughs> I had to come up with a name really fast. So it's a, it? it's a, it's a, no, not really. Just it's about it. telling stories though, and I like the talking heads a lot, so. And talking I heads and documentaries. Yeah, to exactly. Go hand in hand too. Yeah, exactly. Um, brilliant. Well, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. We appreciate thanks so much. Bye.